skin. Today we are going to give you a presentation about one case in chapter 8. The Google Book statement is fair. Enjoy it! Enjoy! Hello everyone! All of you must have known about Google, the world's biggest search engine, and have definitely used it to search for information online. So do you have the thought just like me, that Google is very good, competitive, fair, and convenient? Well, now I'm going to tell you about one case related to the Google Books that might change your perspective about it. So let the story begin. First of all, Google's aim was to put everything digital on its servers, then provide free access to all the world's information. Through this, Google really earned a huge amount of money by selling ad space together with every relevant search it offered. However, a problem arises when what Google wants to put on its servers does not belong to them, just like the dispute about free music recently. Of course, Google is no criminal organization, but what they did was scanning millions of copyrighted books with their permission to provide free to internet users, and then pocketing millions of dollars by selling ad space without sharing that revenue with publishers or authors. It all started with the Google secret in 2002 to scan all the books in libraries and make parts available online and of course display ads next to the results of the book searches. Under the partner program, publishers give permission to Google to scan their books and then make parts of the works available on Google search engine. There was no problem with this program. Publishers get a chance to find a wider market and Google sells more ads. It is the second part of the project that became controversial. Under the library project, Google proposed to scan millions of books in universities and public libraries. It allowed users to search for key phrases and then display relevant portions of the text all without contacting the publishers or seeking permission or paying a royalty fee. Google said it would never show a full page without the right from the copyright holder, just the relevant portion. Google has the backing of a number of prestigious libraries, but not all librarians agree. Some believe this is a marvelous extension of public access to library collections, where other librarians fear it is harmful to book authors and publishers. Libraries that work with Google must agree to make the material unavailable to other commercial search services. Google claims it is performing a public service by making an index of books available to millions on the internet, and perhaps even helping publishers sell new copies of books that currently sit on dusty library shelves. That is all the facts about the Google Books, and now my partner Kian will tell you how the dispute occurred in court. Thank you. Thank you, Hua. With the process of the second part, the library project a considerable number of conflicts arise. One of the most typical events was in 2005, when publishing companies filed in New York Federal Court about copyright infringement. They claimed that Google was unilateral changing copyright law and copied everything. It did no evil except that they were stealing people's property to earn profit. Google, on the other hand, claimed that is it was fair under the fair use doctrine, copying and lending of books by libraries have been considered a fair use in the late 1990s under the Gentlemen's Agreement of Copyright Act in 1975 between libraries and publishers. However, the excuse of Google seems not strong enough. As a result, in 2008, Google agreed to a settlement of lawsuit with the authors and publishers. Google decided to cut a deal for cash and other consideration in return for the non-exclusive right to sell both scan to its database, place advertisements on those pages, and make other commercial ears of its database. Google agreed to pay about $128 million to the parties, but I want to emphasize here that no provision is made in the agreement for public domain books and often books where the copyright holders cannot be identified. Another significant event was in 2009 
when large companies such as Microsoft, Yahoo, and Amazon, university groups, private organizations such as American Association of Publishers, all file the briefs with the court disputing the settlement. They all claimed that Google would gain too much power, including the exclusive rights to sell our print work that remain under copyright, a category that includes millions of books. The critic also argue that the settlement will create a de facto monopoly position for Google, make it difficult for competitors to enter the field, and give Google broad copyright immunity. And now we are going to give you the answers to the case study questions. Question number one, who is harmed by Google's library project? Make a list of harmed group, and for each group, try to devise a solution that would eliminate or lessen the harm. And the answer is, there are two groups that are harmed by Google's library project. The first group is publishers and authors, and the second group is the competitors search engine and computer li companies like Microsoft, Yahoo, and Amazon. To eliminate the harm for publishers and authors, Google should seek for their permissions before scanning the books and pay the royalty fee. And for the competitors, Google should not prohibit library to allow other institutions to scan books to ensure a competitive environment. Why is Google pursuing the library project program make a list of benefits to Google? By processing this project, Google obtained three significant benefits. The first one is Google proposed to scan millions of books in university, public libraries, or without contacting the publisher or seeking permission of authors and paying any royalty fee. The second benefit is that Google gains too much profit by selling ads on zero species. But the last one, or the most important one, is that Google would have exclusive right to sell our print works that have been under copyright. Question number three. If you were a librarian, would you support Google's library project? Why or why not? If I were a librarian, I would properly support the project, since what Google was doing is consistent with the motive of libraries that is making books available to the mass. So next question. Why have firms like Amazon, Yahoo, and Microsoft opposed the Google library project? And why would a firm like Sony support Google? The answer is, those companies, Amazon, Yahoo, and Microsoft, are Google's direct competitor. They have search engine. They serve one book market. So if Google have too much power, those will find more difficult and face a lot of disadvantages. On the other hand, Sony supports Google because they are collaborator. If Google have greater market share, Sony will find more opportunities to develop the product and gain profit also. Question number five. Do you think Google's library project will result in a de facto monopoly in ebook? Or will there be other competitors? My answer is I do not think Google will become a de facto monopoly since book resources are vast and Google solely cannot scan every book. Moreover, there are books that are copyrighted and restricted to Google free search. Google is a very strong power in the ebook market but not on a monopoly. Websites like Amazon can be Google's book direct competitor. That is all for our presentation. Thank you for your listening.